and welcome to the from Nan. Today's turn-down subject is the JVC Color Video Camera TK-C621. This is a one-way teardown because the thing is dead, and we were going to have RCP on this episode, but it's become a little unnecessarily unavailable at the moment. AKA I can't be asked to edit him in. I'll give him a dedicated episode soon. Du -du -du -du, so we start by well you guessed it. Let's give an overview first. Here we have the C C D with the IR filter because it's colour. Because otherwise the infrared will interfere with the colour image. Here we have the iris connector. This is what you use to adjust how the iris adjusts itself based on the light going into the CCD. Nice analog little trim pot, be probably an analog based circuit. On this side we have a lock for the knob to adjust the position of the CCD for extra focusing so it's compatible with all lens types. On the back we have 240 volts power, video output, not entirely sure what this is for, power LED and of course screw mounts for other types of irises within the lens and of course dip switch settings which will control a number of functions as can be seen labelled here. I don't fully know what they all do, that's the thing. And of course, good old phasing. Perhaps my gain phase meter will be useful for it. And white balance. Anyone who plays with cameras should have an idea of what that is. So we first start by removing the screws. Now, on each side we have a total of a billion. Nah, it's three. Three to hold each half of the case on. Now I have had this thing open already because of curiosity. I'm a nosy bugger like that. I already know what's inside. And we're off with the first cover. Revealing a rather nicely designed circuit board covered in an all matter of passive and probably custom parts <laughs> but then again I could be wrong but this is looks like a sort of analog front end because believe it or not the output from a CCD is actually analog that's where the tripod mount was mounted but I removed that ages ago if we pull off here we'll be over to the underside where the power boards and that are which supply the electricity to everything within the camera. It'd be quite interesting to link those outputs up to an oscilloscope, actually. This must be terribly exciting for you watching me play with screws. Three minutes in, and we haven't even got the case off. <laughs> She's not even naked. That's not a good sign. And off with this case, which is a bit more stiff. And we have the power board, including where the transformer link, and it's gone a little more floppity whoppity. And of course, we have this for obvious reasons to shield. Well, you don't really want mains shorting out. Here, there'll be a loud bang and your entire circuit will go and potentially an expensive camera. Now, have we got any date codes on the chips on this side? Here we go, 9644. There's none there. Uh, that's not one. Yeah, not too many date codes, just that one. So we're looking at 1990s technology here. We've got another little bit of plastic to remove. 
these will probably go to upgrade RCP. I think it'd be kind of fun if he's made entirely out of CCTV parts. So we'll start by taking off this first top board, which is where the majority of the microprocessor electronics reside, at least from initial inspections. So, when we pull this up, we take off that and we take off that and we have if we can bring it into a point where the camera can focus on it and we got a decent amount of light we have three main chips I'm not entirely sure what they do we have a crystal which looks like it runs on 28.375 megahertz and another not so much crystal oscillator but oscillator regardless on a ceramic board itself lovely custom thing in fact I wouldn't be surprised if all these chips are custom because of that I'm not entirely sure what these all are. I'll look up data sheets and if I find anything they'll appear about now in the video. Oh. Right, where's the thing? Here it is. Right, we're only able to find one data sheet of the chip of the chip and that was one of the smaller ones. In fact it's the one that I didn't think was linked to the CCD ribbon cable when I was holding it, it was a very top small one and the other two, they're horrible custom things from what I can find, I cannot find anything on them, I can find things to buy them but that's about it no good to... that's what I don't get, how do they expect manufacturers to get their part without buddy, uh... yeah he's recording Without releasing the data sheets. So yeah, it's a CCD video signal processor. And of course, has all the sorts of jazz you'd expect from such a device. Now of course I don't fully understand the specifics of how all these things work, but I've never actually designed a CCD based circuit myself. I'm yet to even get up close to that sort of leveling engineering. But yeah, an interesting little side note. I would imagine that the other chip would be something similar. I'm not 100% sure, really. But anyway, I'll move you on to the rest of the video. Other than that, it all looks like very passive type stuff on this end. I'm not noticing any obvious power supply stuff. Although there's potential for... These could be opto-couplers here. They look very opto -coupley. And of course we have our filtration capacitors. On this side, uh, we'll be, be actually into a point where we can slide this the CCD unit out. Although, good luck getting the bloody connectors and that off. Oh, don't tell me that. Really? Oh, I don't like changing screwdrivers over in the middle of the videos. Grr. Annoying. There we go. Big heavy duty earth cable. Trust me, you want the earth hooked up in something like this. And thus we have the CCD board of free. We will look at that shortly. which is only link up into it. Ah, looking at that, these two chips aren't the same, but these are probably going to be your CCD front end. That is going into this chip here. 
and I'm not sure exactly where it's linking on that one. I think this is probably going to be the microprocessor, if I'm honest. Right, we've got this lovely chassis. Let's see if we can remove the backboard now. Oh God, my legs are itchy and that's not good. It's rather interesting pulling this to pieces like this. Well, it is for me. It might not be for you to watch, but hey, that's why there's a back button. If you're not interested, you can go and watch, I don't know, something stupid instead. Right, we're almost off of this part. And so we have a nice connector holding it all in. Let's see if we can just pull that out or if it's just going to be an awkward bastard. Looks like it's going to be an awkward bastard. However, I see its weakness. <laughs> there we go. And we have... Way! The connector board, which has all this lovely jazz on it. Looking underneath, though... Not particularly exciting under there. It's all passive stuff. Dip switches, capacitors, variable resistors, loads of resistors. I can't see one. The only semiconductor I can see is the LED. Oh wait, there's a diode as well. That's about it. Not particularly interesting. We won't waste value. Well, actually we will have a look at it, because why not? So, if you just bear with it being off camera for a bit while I undo the two screws at the back here and see if it'll pop through. And it will, because I can feel it moving. So, yeah, as I pointed out, not amazingly interesting. You're looking at, well, just passive stuff, really. And we still don't have any light shedded on what this is. It's got a ground point, but exactly what this what is for is still an unknown. Here's the mains cable. So that can go over here. Now we're over to the last unexplored part and we're running out of time. So I'll continue dismantling that and when we hear beep 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 we'll be through to it and all that jazz. So bear with it. There we goes. Ta da! Back to where we were before we were rudely interrupted by the memory chip running out of memory. So, as expected, this little control board for the lens iris only connects to this main board and also the main board where power and also data lines will connect so it can communicate with this little daughter board on here now it's in a connector it's whether i can prize it out hang on it's coming S stiff and it sort of flew out i don't know if you saw it fly across and it's bent two of the pins which is pretty fantastic and it is covered in well 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 looky at this either i was very clumsy and knocked that off or it had somehow i think that may have been my doing but yeah once again a very passive component device there's nothing overly 
that amazing on there, a 14.04, I don't recognise that off the top of it, a 7.611, I don't recognise any of these part numbers, I really don't. But my guess it would be sort of driver type C. I really don't actually know. Maybe it's power supply control. Mains goes in here, transformer, exits out through these two pins, which and we've got diodes here, oh, well mains goes in here to transformer through output here. We got power filtration caps which are by a good brand. In fact all the caps are by decent brands by the looks of it some Ruby comms there. Your Rubicon, that one's one I don't know the name of. We've got 35 volt caps. We're probably looking at either 24 or. It says on the back what sort of voltages it takes. No, it doesn't. I make stuff up. We've got a ferrite thing for noise suppression. Diodes, which will be configured in a bridge rectifier. All that good stuff that us electrical engineers love and know. The power board is relatively simple and of course has some provisions for data lines including one here which doesn't actually link to anything so oh wait no it did it would have linked to this. Silly me. And now we're on to the more interesting bit. The CCD. So we place all other bits into a pile over there. And how do we remove this now? Hmm. Whitey bits. Wonder if we get anything people from JVC watching this. Probably not. As you can tell, we're getting a bit of problems from one of the screws here. Oh, I hate stopping the screws. I really do. Oh, for God's sakes. Oh, you little... Brilliant. Oh, we're getting resistance from these screws. So. Well, this is our springiness. We give it because of the focusing. So, how the bloody hell do we get it off the board? Hmm. I suppose one good start would be remove that. Oh great, we've got more stubborn screws. Remember kids, when dismantling stuff, prepare for stubborn screws that don't like to undo. Because they set out to ruin your day. By disintegrating when you try to undo them. And they're pure evil. So, ah, no, that's more like it. Okay, so the CCD board just popped off, and we got the nice IR filter there that we'll give the camera view through. Seems almost invisible to the camera. You do get a slight tint of blue because that's the colour of it. And here we have the more interesting unit itself, the CCD with its coarse power filtration caps. These are susceptible to noise it's in a socket. I'm thinking of putting this in a nice ring for my finger. You know, take the CCD unit off and do that. 
Then of course we have the control and driver chips which in turn lead up to the main motherboard. Shall we take the CCD off? I reckon so. Be gentle because I don't want to damage it. Uh, well, it was supposed to come off the socket, not pull the socket off the board, but it kind of pulled the socket off the board, which wasn't my intention. So, underneath it is nothing. Quite literally. I have to wonder that this wasn't particularly well soldered or it wasn't designed for people like me pulling it to bits. But either way, that is inside a security camera. Rather interesting if you ask me. Thanks for watching.